Royal Dutch Shell plc, commonly known as Shell, is an Anglo-Euro-Dutch multinational oil and gas company headquartered in the Netherlands and incorporated in the United Kingdom. Created by the merger of Royal Dutch Petroleum and UK-based Shell Transport and Trading, it is the second largest company in the world, in terms of revenue, and one of the six oil and gas super majors. Shell is also one of the world's most valuable companies. As of January, 2013 the largest shareholder is Capital Research Global Investors with 9.85% ahead of BlackRock and second with 6.89%. Shell topped the 2013 Fortune Global 500 list of the world's largest companies. Royal Dutch Shell revenue was equal to 84% of the Netherlands' $555.8 billion GDP at the time. Shell is vertically integrated and is active in every area of the oil and gas industry, including exploration and production, refining, distribution and marketing, petrochemicals, power generation and trading. It has minor renewable energy activities in the form of biofuels and wind. It has operations in over 90 countries, produces around 3.1 million barrels of oil equivalent per day and has 44,000 service stations worldwide. Shell Oil Company, its subsidiary in the United States, is one of its largest businesses. Shell has a primary listing on the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100 index. As of July 6, 2012, it was the largest company on the FTSE, with a market capitalization of a £140.9 a billion. It has secondary listings on Euronext Amsterdam and the New York Stock Exchange. History, Origins The Royal Dutch Shell Group was created in February 1907 through the amalgamation of two rival companies, Royal Dutch Petroleum Company and the Shell Transport and Trading Company Limited of the United Kingdom. It was a move largely driven by the need to compete globally with Standard Oil. The terms of the merger gave 60% ownership of the new group to the Dutch arm and 40% to the British. Royal Dutch Petroleum Company was a Dutch company founded in 1890 by Jean-Baptiste August Kessler, along with Henri Dieterding, when a royal charter was granted by King William III of the Netherlands to a small oil exploration and production company known as Royal Dutch Company for the working of petroleum wells in the Dutch East Indies. The Shell Transport and Trading Company was a British company, founded in 1897 by Marcus Samuel, first Viscount Bested and his brother Samuel Samuel. Their father had owned an antique company in Houndsditch, London, which expanded in 1833 to import and sell seashells, after which the company shell took its name. National patriotic sensibilities would not permit a full-scale merger or takeover of either of the two companies. The Dutch company, Koninklijk Nederlandse Petroleum Maatschap Each, was in charge at the Hague of production and manufacture. A British company was formed called the Anglo-Saxon Petroleum Company, based in London, to direct the transport and storage of the products. 20th century, during the First World War, Shell was the main supplier of fuel to the British Expeditionary Force. It was also the sole supplier of aviation fuel and supplied 80% of the British Army's TNT. It also volunteered all of its shipping to the British Admiralty. The German invasion of Romania in 1916 saw 17% of the group's worldwide production destroyed. In 1919, Shell took control of the Mexican Eagle Petroleum Company and in 1921 formed Shell Mex Limited which marketed products under the Shell and Eagle brands in the United Kingdom. In 1929, Shell Chemicals was founded. By the end of the 1920s, Shell was the world's leading oil company producing 11% of the world's crude oil supply and owning 10% of its tanker tonnage. Shell Mex House was completed in 1931, and was the head office for Shell's marketing activity worldwide. In 1932, partly in response to the difficult economic conditions of the times, Shell Mex merged its UK marketing operations with those of British Petroleum to create Shell Mex and BP a company that traded until the brand separated in 1975. Royal Dutch Company ranked 79th among United States corporations in the value of World War II military production contracts. The 1930s saw Shell's Mexican assets seized by the local government. 
After the invasion of the Netherlands by Germany in 1939, the head office of the Dutch companies was moved to Curaçao. Around 1952, Shell was the first company to purchase and use a computer in the Netherlands. The computer, a Ferranti Mark I, was assembled and used at the Shell Laboratory in Amsterdam. In 1970 Shell acquired the mining company Billiton, which it subsequently sold in 1994 and now forms part of BHP Billiton. 21st Century In November 2004, following a period of turmoil caused by the revelation that Shell had been overstating its oil reserves, it was announced that the Shell Group would move to a single capital structure, creating a new parent company to be named Royal Dutch Shell plc with its primary listing on the London Stock Exchange, a secondary listing on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange, its headquarters and tax residency in The Hague, Netherlands and its registered office in London. The unification was completed on July 20, 2005 and the original owners delisted their companies from their respective exchanges. On July 20, 2005, the Shell Transport and Trading Company plc was delisted from the LSE, whereas, Royal Dutch Petroleum Company from New York Stock Exchange on November 18, 2005. The shares of the company were issued at a 60-40 advantage for the shareholders of Royal Dutch in line with the original ownership of the Shell Group. During the 2009 Iraqi oil services contracts tender, a consortium led by Shell and which included Petronas was awarded a production contract for the Minoon field in the south of Iraq, which contains an estimated 12.6 billion barrels of oil. The West Kerna One field production contract was awarded to a consortium led by ExxonMobil and included Shell. In February 2010 Shell and Cozen formed a 50-50 joint venture, Rawzen, comprising all of Cozen's Brazilian ethanol, energy generation, fuel distribution and sugar activities, and all of Shell's Brazilian retail fuel and aviation distribution businesses. In March 2010, Shell announced the sale of some of its assets including its liquid petroleum gas business, to meet the cost of a planned $28 billion capital spending program. Shell invited buyers to submit indicative bids, due by March 22, with a plan to raise $2 a Euro 3 BN from the sale. In June 2010, Royal Dutch Shell agreed to acquire all the business of East Resources for a cash consideration of $4.7 a billion. The transaction included East Resources' tight gas fields. Over the course of 2013, the corporation began the sale of its U.S. shale gas assets and cancelled a $20 billion U.S. dollars gas project that was to be constructed in the U.S. state of Louisiana. A new CEO Ben Van Bearden was appointed in January 2014, prior to the announcement that the corporation's overall performance in 2013 was 38% lower than 2012 a euro the value of Shell's shares fell by 3% as a result. Following the sale of the majority of its Australian assets in February 2014, the corporation plans to sell a further US$15 billion US dollars worth of assets in the period leading up to 2015, with deals announced in Australia, Brazil and Italy. Corporate Affairs Management on August 4, 2005, the board of directors announced the appointment of Jorma Alila, chairman and CEO of Nokia at the time, to succeed Arch Jacobs as the Campania Euro Unregistered Trademark S non-executive chairman on June 1, 2006. Alila is the first Shell chairman to be neither Dutch nor British. Other non-executive directors include Martin van den Berg, Wim Kok, Nina Henderson, Lords Kerr, Adelbert van Rox and Christine Morin Postal. As of July 1, 2009, Peter Vosa became CEO of Shell. Vosa, who is Swiss, was the first non-Dutch, non-British CEO of the company. On July 10, 2013, Shell announced the appointment of Van Bearden, the previous director of its refining and marketing operations, as the corporation's new CEO, a transition that became effective on January 3, 2014. Following a career at the corporation, in locations such as Australia and Africa, Anne Picard was appointed as the executive vice president of the Arctic at Royal Dutch Shell, a role that was publicized in an interview with McKinsey and Company in June 2014. Name and logo, the name Shell is linked to the Shell Transport and Trading Company. In 1833, the founder's father, 
also Marcus Samuel, founded an import business to sell seashells to London collectors. When collecting seashell specimens in the Caspian Sea area in 1892, the younger Samuel realized there was potential in exporting lamp oil from the region and commissioned the world's first purpose-built oil tanker, the Murex, to enter this market. By 1907 the company had a fleet. Although for several decades the company had a refinery at Shell Haven on the Thames, there is no evidence of this having provided the name. The Shell logo is one of the most familiar commercial symbols in the world. This logo is known as the Pecton after the seashell Pecton Maximus, on which its design is based. The yellow and red colors used are thought to relate to the colors of the flag of Spain, as Shell built early service stations in California, previously a Spanish colony. The current revision of the logo was designed by Raymond Louis in 1971. The slash was removed from the name Royal Dutch Shell in 2005, concurrent with moves to merge the two legally separate companies to the single legal entity which exists today. Logo Evolution Shell Formula One Sponsorship Shell has been involved with Formula One for many years, particularly with Scuderia Ferrari who the company have worked with for over 50 years. Shell was also the title sponsor for the Belgian Grand Prix in the 2013 season. Operations, Business Groupings Shell is currently organized into four major business groupings, Upstream International Euro manages the upstream business outside the Americas. It searches for and recovers crude oil and natural gas, liquefies and transports gas, and operates the upstream and midstream infrastructure necessary to deliver oil and gas to the market. Its activities are organized primarily within geographic units, although there are some activities that are managed across the business or provided through support units. Upstream Americas A Euro manages the upstream business in North and South America. It searches for and recovers crude oil and natural gas, transports gas and operates the upstream and midstream infrastructure necessary to deliver oil and gas to market. Upstream Americas also extracts bitumen from oil sands that is converted into synthetic crude oil. It comprises operations organized into business-wide managed activities and supporting activities. Downstream a Euro manages Shell's manufacturing, distribution and marketing activities for oil products and chemicals. Manufacturing and supply includes refinery, supply and shipping of crude oil. Projects and technology a Euro manages the delivery of Shell's major projects and drives the research and innovation to create technology solutions. It provides technical services and technology capability covering both upstream and downstream activities. It is also responsible for providing functional leadership across Shell in the areas of health, safety and environment, and contracting and procurement. Oil and Gas Activities Shell's primary business is the management of a vertically integrated oil company. The development of technical and commercial expertise in all stages of this vertical integration from the initial search for oil through its harvesting, transportation, refining and finally trading and marketing established the core competencies on which the company was founded. Similar competencies were required for natural gas, which has become one of the most important businesses in which Shell is involved, and which contributes a significant proportion of the company's profits. While the vertically integrated business model provided significant economies of scale and barriers to entry, each business now seeks to be a self-supporting unit without subsidies from other parts of the company. Traditionally, Shell was a heavily decentralized business worldwide with companies in over 100 countries, each of which operated with a high degree of independence. The upstream tended to be far more centralized with much of the technical and financial direction coming from the central offices in The Hague. Nevertheless, there were very large exploration and production companies in a few major oil and gas production centers such as the United Kingdom, Nigeria, Brunei, and Oman. Downstream operations, which now also includes the chemicals business, generates a third of Shell's profits worldwide and is known for its global network of more than 40,000 petrol stations and its 47 oil refineries. The downstream business, which in some countries also included oil refining, generally included a retail petrol station network, lubricants manufacture and marketing, industrial fuel and lubricant sales and a host of other product market sectors such as LPG and bitumen. 
the practice in Shell was that these businesses were essentially local and that they were best managed by local operating companies a euro often with middle and senior management reinforced by expatriates. In the 1990s, this paradigm began to change, and the independence of operating companies around the world was gradually reduced. Today, virtually all of Shell a euro unregistered trademark S operations in various businesses are much more directly managed from London in The Hague. The autonomy of a euro OE operating companies a euro has been largely removed, as more global businesses have been created. Africa Shell began drilling for oil in Africa during the 1950s. Shell began production in Nigeria in 1958. Shell operates in the upstream oil sector in Algeria, Cameroon, Egypt, Gabon, where is the giant Rabi Kaunga oil field, Ghana, Libya, Morocco, Nigeria. South Africa and Tunisia, and in the downstream sector and 16 other countries. In Nigeria, Shell told U.S. diplomats that it had placed staff in all the main ministries of the government. In April 2010, Shell announced its intention to divest from downstream business of all African countries except South Africa and Egypt to Vital and Helios. In several countries such as Tunisia, protests and strikes broke out. Shell denied rumors of the sellout. Shell continues however upstream activities extracting crude oil in the oil-rich Niger Delta as well as downstream commercial activities in South Africa. Asia, Malaysia, Shell first entered Malaysia, Miri in 1910 in an oil well drilling project. Malaysia's first oil well was discovered by Shell on Canada Hill in Miri, Sarawak in 1910. Shell's Miri No. 1 was spudded on August 10 that year, and began producing 83 barrels per day in December. Today, the oil well, fondly known as the Grand Old Lady, is a state monument. After the discovery of oil in Miri, Shell built Malaysia's first oil refinery in 1914. In the same year, Shell laid a submarine pipeline in Miri, a breakthrough in the technology of transporting crude to tankers at that time. In Malaysia, 2012, Shell refining capacity is 109,000 BD. In the Port Dixon refinery, Shell invested 800 million Malaysian ringgits to upgrade the diesel processing plant. In 2012, Shell have 900 retail outlets and planning to open 30 more in the future. Republic of the Philippines Royal Dutch Shell operates in the Philippines under its subsidiary, Pilipinas Shell Petroleum Corporation. Its headquarters is in Makati City and it has facilities in the Pandacan Oil Depot and other key locations. On January 2010, the Bureau of Customs claimed 7.34 billion pesos worth of unpaid excise taxes against Pilipinas Shell for importing catalytic cracked gasoline and light catalytic cracked gasoline stating that those imports are bound for tariff charges. Pilipinas Shell denied the claim stating that those imports are raw materials for making their products. The company later emphasized that they are considering closing their local oil refinery if the case continues. Pilipinas Shell informed the public that they will exhaust all necessary steps to meet the demand for fuel. In 2014, the Banco Central NG Pilipinas released commemorative 100 peso bill. Singapore Shell has a strong presence in Singapore, indeed Singapore is the main center for Shell a Euro unregistered trademark S petrochemical operations in Asia Pacific region. Shell Eastern Petroleum Limited have their refinery located in Singapore's Pulau Bikam Island. They also operate as Shell Chemicals Sierra in Jurong Island. Europe, Ireland, Shell first started trading in Ireland in 1902. Shell E&P Island is an Irish exploration and production subsidiary of Royal Dutch Shell. Its headquarters are on Leeson Street in Dublin. It was acquired in May 2002. Its main project is the Corrib Gas Project, a large gas field off the northwest coast, for which Shell has encountered controversy and protests in relation to the onshore pipeline and license terms. In 2005 Shell disposed of its entire retail and commercial fuels business in Ireland to Topaz Energy Group. This included depots, company-owned petrol stations and supply agreement stations throughout the island of Ireland. The retail outlets were rebranded as Topaz in 2008 September. Nordic countries, on August 27, 2007, 
Royal Dutch Shell and Rating Group, the owner of the 7-Eleven brand in Scandinavia, announced an agreement to rebrand some 269 service stations across Norway, Sweden, Finland and Denmark, subject to obtaining regulatory approvals under the different competition laws in each country. On April 2010 Shell announced that the corporation is in process of trying to find a potential buyer for all of its operations in Finland and is doing similar market research concerning Swedish operations. On October 2010 Shell's gas stations and the heavy vehicle fuel supply networks in Finland and Sweden, along with a refinery located in Gothenburg, Sweden were sold to ST1, a Finnish energy company, more precisely to its major shareholding parent company Kialoi. Shell branded gas stations will be rebranded within maximum of five years from the acquisition and the number of gas stations is likely to be reduced. Until then the stations will operate under Shell brand license. North America Through most of Shell's history, its business in the United States, Shell Oil Company was substantially independent with its stock being traded on the New York Stock Exchange and with little direct involvement from the group a Euro unregistered trademark as central offices in the running of the American business. Such practice also changed in the 1990s when Shell first bought out the shares in Shell Oil that it did not own and then took a more hands-on approach. In Canada, also previously very independent, Shell has completed its purchase of the shares in Shell Canada that it did not own, to apply the new global business model. Oceania, Australia In Australia, retailer Coles Group purchased the rights to the retail business from the existing Shell Australia multi-site franchisees in 2003 for an amount less than $100 Australian dollars a million. The purchase was made in response to a popular discount fuel offer by rival Woolworths Limited launched some years earlier. Coles express only affiliation with Shell as that Shell is the exclusive supplier of fuel and lubricant products, leases the service station property to Coles, and maintains the presence of the Pecton, and other Shell branding on the price board and other signage. Coles Express sets fuel and shop prices and runs the business, provides convenience and grocery merchandise through its supply chain and distribution network, and directly employs the service station staff. Shell has also moved to the outback with a huge complex in Coobapadi, South Australia. The Opal Capital of the World Royal Dutch Shell is currently developing the first floating liquefied natural gas facility, which will be situated 200 km off the coast of Western Australia and is due for completion in around 2017. When it is finished, it will measure around 488 metres long and 74 metres wide and when fully ballasted will weigh 600,000 tons. Following the decision by the Royal Dutch Shell Fuel Corporation to close its Geelong, Australia refinery in April 2013, a third consecutive annual loss was recorded for Shell's Australian refining and fuel marketing assets. Revealed in June 2013, the write down is worth 203 million Australian dollars, and was preceded by a 638 million Australian dollars right down in 2012 and a 407 million Australian dollars right down in 2011 after the closure of the Clyde refinery in Sydney, Australia. In February 2014, Shell sold its Australian refinery and petrol stations for 2.6 billion US dollars to Vital, a Geneva based company. Vital stated that the Geelong refinery will remain open as the company plans to expand further into the Australian market. Royal Dutch Shell will continue to invest in the Australian market, with projects that involve Chevron Corporation, Woodside Petroleum and Prelude. New Zealand, Shell has had a long-time presence in New Zealand, and partly owns the Maui and Kapuni natural gas fields. In 2011 it completed the sale of its petrol retail division to Infratil and the New Zealand Superannuation Fund, which rebranded the stations as Z Energy. Shell still operates in New Zealand via gas and condensate exploration and infrastructure. Other activities, over the years Shell has occasionally sought to diversify away from its core oil, gas and chemicals businesses. These diversifications have included nuclear power, coal, metals and electricity generation. None of these ventures was seen as successful and all have now been divested. 
In the early 2000s Shell moved into alternative energy and there is now an embryonic renewables business that has made investments in solar power, wind power, hydrogen, and forestry. The forestry business went the way of nuclear, coal, metals and electricity generation, and was disposed of in 2003. In 2006 Shell paid Solar World to take over its entire solar business and in 2008, the company withdrew from the London Array which is expected to become the world's largest offshore wind farm. Shell also is involved in large-scale hydrogen projects. Hydrogenforecast.com describes Shell's approach thus far as consisting of baby steps, but with an underlying message of extreme optimism. Shell holds 50% of Raw Zen, a joint venture with Brazilian sugarcane producer Cozen which is the third largest Brazil-based energy company by revenues and a major producer of ethanol. Current projects, Arctic, following the purchase of an offshore lease in 2005, Shell initiated its 4.5 US dollars a billion Arctic drilling program in 2006, after the corporation purchased the Kulak oil rig and leased the Noble Discoverer drill ship. At inception, the project was led by Pete Slay Ibe, a Shell executive who had previously worked in the North Sea. However, after the purchase of a second offshore lease in 2008, Shell only commenced drilling work in 2012, due to the refurbishment of rigs permit delays from the relevant authorities and lawsuits. The plans to drill in the Arctic led to protests from environmental groups, particularly Greenpeace. Furthermore, analysts in the energy field, as well as related industries, also expressed skepticism due to perceptions that drilling in the region is too dangerous because of harsh conditions and remote locations. Further problems hampered the Arctic project after the commencement of drilling in 2012. As Shell dealt with a series of issues that involved air permits, Coast Guard certification of a marine vessel and severe damage to essential oil spill equipment. Additionally, difficult weather conditions resulted in the delay of drilling during mid-2012 and the already dire situation was exacerbated by the Kulak incident at the end of the year. Royal Dutch Shell had invested nearly US$5 billion US dollars by this stage of the project. As the Kulak oil rig was being towed to the American state of Washington to be serviced in preparation for the 2013 drilling season, a winter storm on December 27, 2012 caused the towing crews, as well as the rescue service, to lose control of the situation. As of January 1, 2013, the Kulak was grounded off the coast site Kolodak Island, near the eastern end of Kodiak Island. Following the accident, a Fortune magazine contacted Larry McKinney, the executive director at the Hart Research Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies at Texas A&M, and he explained that a Euro OEA two-month delay in the Arctic is not a two-month delay. A two-month delay could wipe out the entire drilling season a Euro it was unclear if Shell would recommence drilling in mid-2013, following the Kulak incident and, in February 2013. The corporation stated that it would pause its closely watched drilling project off the Alaskan coast in 2013, and will instead prepare for future exploration. In January 2014, the corporation announced the extension of the suspension of its drilling program in the Arctic, with Chief Executive Van Bearden explaining that the project is under review due to both market and internal issues. A June 2014 interview with Picard indicated that. Following a forensic analysis of the problems encountered in 2012, Royal Dutch Shell will continue with the project and Picard stated that she perceives the future of the corporation activity in the Arctic region as a long-term marathon. Picard stated that the forensic look-back revealed there was an on-off switch, and further explained. In other words, don't your Euro unregistered trademark T spend the money unless you are Euro unregistered trademark re sure you are Euro unregistered trademark re going to have the legal environment to go forward. Don't your Euro unregistered trademark T spend the money unless you are Euro unregistered trademark re sure you are Euro unregistered trademark re going to have the permit. No, I can't a Euro unregistered trademark T tell you that e a Euro unregistered trademark am going to have that permit until June. But we need to plan like we Euro unregistered trademark re going to have that permit in June. And so probably the biggest lesson is to make sure we could smooth out the on off switches wherever we could and take control of our own destiny. Based upon the interview with Picard, 
Shell is approaching the project as an investment that will reap energy resources with a lifespan of around 30 years. Controversies Shell has been criticized for its businesses in Africa, notably in relation to protests of the Ogoni in 1995. In the 1990s, protesters criticized the company's environmental record, particularly the possible pollution caused by the proposed disposal of the Bren Spa platform into the North Sea. Despite support from the UK government, Shell reversed the decision under public pressure but maintained that sinking the platform would have been environmentally better. Shell subsequently published an unequivocal commitment to sustainable development, supported by executive speeches reinforcing this commitment. 2004 Overstatement of Oil Reserves In 2004 Shell overstated its oil reserves, resulting in loss of confidence in the group, AA 17 pounds a million fine by the Financial Services Authority and the departure of the chairman Philip Watts. A lawsuit resulted in the payment of $450 a million to non-American shareholders in 2007. Corporate Communications Shell's advertising regarding its renewable energy business has been described as a greenwash by some environmental lobbies, though its renewable energy activities have been praised by other commentators. In August 2008, the British Advertising Standards Authority ruled that Shell had misled the public in an advertisement when it claimed that a $10 a billion oil sands problem in Alberta, Canada was a sustainable energy source. Environmental Pollution The presence of companies like Shell in the Niger Delta has led to extreme environmental issues in the Niger Delta. Many pipelines in the Niger Delta owned by Shell are old and corroded. This has resulted in many oil spills in this area that have degraded the environment, killing off vegetation and fish. Shell has acknowledged its responsibility for keeping the pipelines new but has also denied responsibility for environmental causes. This has led to mass protests from the Niger Delta inhabitants and Amnesty International against Shell and Friends of the Earth Netherlands. It has also led to action plans to boycott Shell by environmental groups and human rights groups. In January 2013, a Dutch court rejected four out of five allegations brought against the firm over oil pollution in the Niger Delta but found a subsidiary guilty of one case of pollution, ordering compensation to be paid to a Nigerian farmer. On January 15, 1999, off the Argentinian town of Magdalena, Buenos Aires, the shell tanker Estrella Pampiana collided with a German freighter, emptying its contents into the lake, polluting the environment drinkable water, plants and animals. Over a decade after the spill, a referendum held in Magdalena determined the acceptance of a 9.5 million US dollars compensatory payout from Shell. Shell denied responsibility for the spill, but an Argentine court ruled in 2002 that the corporation was responsible. Health and safety, a number of incidents over the years led to criticism of Shell's health and safety record including repeated warnings by the UK Health and Safety Executive about the poor state of the company's North Sea platforms. Human Rights In the beginning of 1996, several human rights groups brought cases to hold Shell accountable for alleged human rights violations in Nigeria, including summary execution, crimes against humanity, torture, inhumane treatment and arbitrary arrest and detention. In particular, Shell stood accused of a collaborating in the execution of Ken Sero Wiwa and eight other leaders of the Ogoni tribe of southern Nigeria, who were hanged in 1995 by Nigeria's then military rulers. The lawsuits were brought against Royal Dutch Shell and Brian Anderson, the head of its Nigerian operation. In 2009, Shell agreed to pay $15.5 million in a legal settlement. Shell has not accepted any liability over the allegations against it. In 2009, Shell was the subject of an Amnesty International report into the deterioration of human rights as a consequence of Shell's activities in the Niger Delta. In particular, Amnesty criticized the continuation of gas flaring and Shell's slow response to oil spills. In 2010, a leaked cable revealed that Shell claims to have inserted staff into all the main ministries of the Nigerian government and know everything that was being done in those ministries, according to Shell's top executive in Nigeria. The same executive also boasted that the Nigerian government had forgotten about the extent of Shell's infiltration. 
documents released in 2009 reveal that Shell regularly made payments to the Nigerian military in order to prevent protests. Arctic Project In 2010 Greenpeace activists painted no Arctic drilling with spilled BP oil on the side of a ship in the Gulf that was en route to explore for Arctic oil for Shell. At the protest, Phil Radford of Greenpeace called for President Obama to ban all offshore oil drilling and call for an end to the use of oil in our cars by 2030. On March 16, 2012, 52 Greenpeace activists from five different countries boarded Fenica and Nordica, multi-purpose icebreakers chartered to support Shell's drilling rigs near Alaska. Around the same time period, a reporter for Fortune magazine spoke with Edward Itter, an Ian Nupiat Eskimo leader and the former mayor of the North Slope Borough, who expressed that he was conflicted about Shell's plans in the Arctic, as he was very concerned that an oil spill could destroy the Ian Nupiat Eskimos' hunting and fishing culture, but his borough also received major tax revenue from oil and gas production. Additionally, further revenue from energy activity was considered crucial to the future of the living standard in Itter's community. In terms of safety, Itter identified the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, a precious area for a large number of environmentalists, as a preferred option, explaining, you can clean up oil so much easier onshore. The risks are not even comparable a euro in July 2012. Greenpeace activists shut down 53 Shell petrol stations in Edinburgh and London in a protest against the company's plans to drill for oil in the Arctic. Greenpeace's Save the Arctic campaign aims to prevent oil drilling and industrial fishing in the Arctic by declaring the uninhabited area around the North Pole a global sanctuary. Concerns increased after the Kulak oil rig ran aground near Kodiak Island in December 2012. An anonymous energy analyst, who worked for a money manager with strong ties to Shell, stated after the accident. I did the Euro unregistered trademark T expect to see so many things go wrong in their first year, but it shows you how hard it is to do what they want to do. In this business, the name of the game is time to first cash flow, and if you can't a Euro unregistered trademark T get first cash flow for at least 10 years, then eat a Euro unregistered trademark S going to be awfully hard to earn a decent return on the project. In response, Shell filed lawsuits to seek injunctions from possible protests, and Benjamin Jealous of the NAACP and Radford argued that the legal action was trampling Americans' rights. According to Greenpeace, Shell lodged a request with Google to ban video footage of a Greenpeace protest action that occurred at the Shell-sponsored Formula One Belgian Grand Prix on August 25, 2013, in which Save the Arctic.org banners appear at the winner's podium ceremony. In the video, the banners rise up automatically a Euro activists controlled their appearance with the use of four radio car antennas a Euro revealing the website URL, alongside an image that consists of half of a polar bear's head and half of the Shell logo. As of April 5, 2014, the video is available on the Green Pay Update YouTube channel and has received just over 300,000 views. The company notes that no one has yet fully determined how to clean up an oil spill in pack ice or broken ice. Royal Dutch Shell then announced a pause in the timeline of the project in early 2013 and, in January 2014, the corporation announced the extension of the suspension of its drilling program in the Arctic. A June 2014 interview with the corporation's new executive vice president of the Arctic indicated that Royal Dutch Shell will continue with its activity in the region. See also Algae Fuel, Kaka War, Lensbury ROYALDUTCHSHELLPLC.com, Shell Guides, a series of guidebooks, Shell V Power, list of investors in Bernard Elmadoff Securities, list of companies based in London, references. Bibliography, A Century in Oil by Stephen Howarth, 1997, ISBN 0-297-82247-0. A History of the Shell Transport and Trading Company. A History of Royal Dutch Shell by Stephen Howarth and others, 2007. ISBN 978-0-19-929877-8, Seven Sisters by Anthony Sampson ISBN 978-0-553-23450-2. Shell Shock. 
The Secrets and Spin of an Oil Giant by Ian Cummins and John Besant, 2005. ISBN 1-84018-941-X, External Links, Official Website. Royal Dutch Shell Companies Grouped at Open Corporates.